The last step is to right click the control again and this time from the pop-up menu select view code. This brings you into the Visual Basic for Applications editor and it automatically creates a macro for you. A macro begins with sub and ends with n sub. This macro also begins with the word private because this macro is associated with an object, the control, the checkbox, that is on this sheet and thus this macro can only be applied to that sheet. But notice the name that it gives the macro, CHK Scenario, which was the same name as the name property that I gave to the, to the control. It then has appended to the name underscore click. This is something that's called an event, meaning when somebody clicks this box, this macro will be executed. Now the only thing left is to write the code for the macro. Writing the code is where the complexity takes place. Depending upon what you do, that determines how complex the code is. In this case, our code was quite simple. What we're doing first here is creating a variable called x. This variable called x is required when we call this smart view function called hip retrieve later on in our code. But what we're doing within the code is simple conditional logic, if, else, and if. And we're saying if the check scenario checkbox, if its value property, boxes, controls have many properties, one of which is the value, if that value is true, when the user checks on the checks box, it has a value of true, then we're going to change cell D1, range D1, cells have properties also, one of which is value, and change it simply to the text actual. If they uncheck it, the value of the check scenario box will be false, and we'll do the else part of the code, which is essentially the same thing, change D1, but this time to budget. At this point, the only thing that's changed is cell D1. The data on the sheet has not changed. What we then lastly need to do is call a smart view function called hip retrieve, which does a refresh. And hip retrieve requires only one argument. An argument is a parameter uh, telling the function what is needed in order to do its work. And in this case, the argument is simply the word empty. It's a keyword standing for the active sheet because hip retrieve, which refreshes the sheet, needs to know which sheet to retrieve. And rather than giving the name of the sheet, we're going to use this keyword empty, which means use the sheet that you're on. Simple as that, and sub. Of course, more complex scenarios need more complex coding. Let's see it work in action one more time. Here's our simple report. We've got actual in cell D1. The checkbox is checked, but when I uncheck it, the data changes because we've changed cell D1 to budget and then, then done the hip retrieve smart view function. And when I check it again, the data changes, cell D1 changes, and the data changes, proving that it works. As you learn more about report automation, you can do add things like command buttons. In this case, I'm outputting two input boxes to the user, asking for their username here and their password there. And once they've done so, they're logged into the SBase database, and then they can go on their merry way, and in this case, select actual, which changes cell A4 and A18, and changes the data. I'll switch it back to budget, the two cells change, the two reports change. And check from profit to profit percent. In this case, only cell A5 is changing, and the top report data changes based on that selection. And there's a drop-down list here where I can select any market I want. In this case, California. Cells A6 and A20 change, and the data in both reports changes. And by the way, this shows another benefit of report automation. You'll notice I have two S-Base reports on the same sheet. Smart View via the Smart View add-in does not allow this, but via the Smart View 
functions that allow report automation, we can actually have two reports on one sheet and update both of them based upon user selections. One disadvantage of having multiple controls on a sheet is that it clutters up the sheet. So here's an example of avoiding uh, Excel control clutter. Here, let's say the situation is our users want multiple reports based upon this template. They want a product, 110, 120, those are products, analysis based on their sales, cost of goods, etc., etc. But they want to choose whether it's an actual scenario, variant scenario, budget scenario. They want to choose whether it's the West market, the East market, the New York market. And they want to choose what period it is for, quarter one, quarter two, January, February, whatever. And we're going to allow them to make those changes by changing something that's hidden here in this template. I'll unhide it for a moment. Cells B3, C3, and D3, where they're going to change the scenario, the time period, and the market. I'll rehide it here. And they're going to do that by simply ignoring the template and using these two controls on a separate sheet that drives everything. One, they're going to log in. But notice when they log in, I'm supplying them with a dialog box, which is really called technically a user form. And they're going to enter their username and password. And once they've done so, they're going to press the second command button where they're going to create one or many reports based upon the selections they make in this dialog box, this user form, which has many different selections that they can make. For instance, they can select the market or markets. I want Florida, New Hampshire, California, let's say. And they could select as many as they want from this list here. And they can select one period from this time period from this list. Let's say it's April. And then one scenario from this group of option buttons. Let's say they want variance reports. And once they've selected those and press the build button, it will automatically build three reports based on that previously displayed template. There we have New Hampshire, there we have Florida coming up, and now we've got California. And the dialog box goes away and you can see that we have variants for California in April. Switch to the New Hampshire tab, variants for New Hampshire in April, different data, and variants for Florida in April all based on the creation of this template and the creation of these two dialogues, the most important one being the create reports. Notice that the created reports appeared as separate sheets in this workbook, but had the user selected output them to workbook instead, they would have all been output to separate work workbooks. All of this can be done with report automation using those smart view functions within Excel macros. I hope you've learned something about smart view report automation from this webinar and that it has whetted your appetite to learn more. If so, I would recommend taking our smart view toolkit course. It's a two-day course in which you learn all about the ActiveX controls, all about Visual Basic for Applications macros, and those smart view functions that are necessary within those macros in order to do those smart view things you've seen me demonstrate. If you have any questions about the webinar, please contact me, Craig Messamring, at the phone number and email address you see. If you're interested in the SmartView Toolkit class or any other training from HCG, please contact DJ Holter at his phone number and email address. Thanks for attending the webinar, and I hope to see you again sometime.